Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday broadcast. Today, we'll conclude Jeannie's story about how she miraculously recovered from a brain tumor. And we'll share with you an anointed time of ministry where Jeannie sang the anointing. And we prayed and laid hands on people to receive their healing. If you're believing for a manifestation of your healing today, then join me at the end of this broadcast as we all pray together. This is your time to be healed. But before we get into the message today, here's Jeannie to minister to you in song, He's a Healing Jesus. Just worship God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. His powers flow in your way. Even now, while you are calling, His glory is falling. And by His name, that sickness, it cannot stay. He's a healing Jesus. He's a healing Jesus. Oh, let His power.
all I could think to say was get it out of the street. In fact, that was the last thing I remember saying. The next thing I remember was being put into an ambulance on a stretcher. I had absolutely no fear for I felt God's presence. The doctors wanted to put three rods in my back to support my vertebrae column, but I chose not to have the surgery. I knew in my heart that God would supernaturally take care of me. Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness is a book about Jeannie Caldwell's real-life encounters with God. She shares them with you in the hope that your faith and trust in a loving Heavenly Father will increase. To order the book, Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness, call 800-264-2525 or visit our website at vtntv.com. Here's Pastor Caldwell with today's message. Go to 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. I don't think enough Christians, 1 John 2, 27, I don't think enough Christians understand the anointing. You, you, you can't do anything without the anointing. The anointing is what puts you over. At the minister's conference in January, I taught on uh, God's AAA program, authority, anointing, and agape, the love of Christ. You've been given all three. But authority without the anointing just makes you holler louder. <laughs> I've been doing a personal study on Christ, Jesus, the man, the difference between the anointed, uh, difference between the humanity and the deity of Christ. Brother Jesse and I have done, uh, did a meeting together down in El Dorado, Arkansas, a few months ago, and he shared again his testimony about how he went to heaven and saw Jesus. And I, I always love to hear that, that testimony, and he was talking about how Jesus told him to go tell his children that he's coming soon and he talked about seeing King David and Paul and Jesus and I, I just was so enthused about it and he said you know and Jesus was over there shouting and, and, and preaching and, well I'd never heard any description of him like that so I started looking up in the Bible I wanted to see you know I hear preachers on TV and so forth and they, they shout and spit and holler and run and jump so I wanted to say I, I wonder if Jesus preached like that and I couldn't find any place where he shouted I did find places where it says no man spake like this man I found where it said and he spoke with authority and then I found the disciples said, didn't his word burn in our hearts? And I said, Lord, I don't find any place where Jesus shouts. He said, oh, you just didn't read the right scripture. He said, go over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Lord himself descended from heaven with a shout. The Lord descended from heaven the voice of the archangel, the shout. So, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 27. But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. Now, in John 14, John 16, Jesus told his disciples that he was not going to leave them comfortless but that he would send the comforter, another comforter, and he would lead them, guide them, direct them. And he would not only be with them, but he would be in them. So the anointing is in us. 1 Corinthians 1.21 says, He who hath anointed us is God. Now keep in mind, our granddaughter told Jeannie, or told me, said, Granddaddy, Mimi's got the anointing in her. Let her hear herself sing. The anointing which you've received of him abides in you, and you need not that any man teach you, 
but as the same anointing teaches you of all things in his truth and is no lie, and even it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. In the song that she sings, and, and we first heard this uh, uh, from Candy Staten. Candy Staten recorded this song many, many years ago. And Jeannie really felt the anointing so much. And we depend on the anointing so much that she recorded it. And in the verses to the song, it says the anointing will teach you how to talk and teach you how to walk. That's what she needed. She needed to know how to walk and how to talk. Now, I forgot this part. Let me go back to, to my discussion with Jesse about Jesus. And I, so I called Jesse and I said, Jesse, I, I'm really, this is really important to me. I said, you always talk about seeing Jesus. I said, but I want to know what he looked like. You know, folks, after this phase of our life is over, we're going to spend eternity with Jesus. I'm ready to go in the rapture. Are you ready? Yes. I believe it's sooner than we yes. thought. My wife had a, an experience with the Lord a few years ago, and she just said, Jesus, I just want to touch you. Have you ever felt that way? Jesus, how many of you know that's really why we're here? It's because of him. She said, Jesus, I just want to touch you. And he said, daughter, when you get to heaven, you can touch me. She said, Lord, everybody's going to want to be touching you. How can I touch you through the millions of people? He said, at the marriage supper of the Lamb, I will personally serve you. And you can touch me then. I mean, Jesus is becoming so real. He's not just a biblical character. He's a man. He's as much man as he was God. He's as much God as he is man. He's the God man. He was the word made flesh and dwelt among us. So I said, Jesse, I want to know what Jesus looked like. I said, can you tell me? Meaning, do you have permission to tell me? He said, oh, yeah. He said he's about six feet tall, about your height, tall and slender. said, uh, the nails through his hands, those were not ten-penny nails. They were more like railroad spikes. He said, you can still see daylight through them today. I said, well, what about his face? I want to know his face. He said, you can't see his face. He said, it's covered in light, in glory. But he said, I can tell you this, when he turned around and walked off, he said, I saw the back of it. He has brown hair. <laughs> and stories that I've read about people that have been to heaven, they all say about the same thing. They say that the average age in heaven is about 30, 33 years old. So we're going to be in our 30s for eternity. <laughs> so I started playing the CD to Jeannie. She got to where she could talk better, quicker, stronger. Uh, she completed the physical therapy and all that. She went home May 27th. Home care people came out, continued to give her physical therapy because the speech and the occupational therapy was completed. Physical therapy was completed. She was ahead of everything they had ever seen. They said, well, you don't need any more therapy. When the rehab, when she left rehab and went out to get in the car, one of the little nurses. And I'll have to say this, even though we'd never been in a situation like this, all the people that we met in the medical field, hospital, rehab, everything, I've never met any finer, sweeter, kinder, caring people than in the medical profession. 
I asked one of the nurses, I said, you know, we've not experienced anything like this because we've never been in a situation like this. I said, why do you work here? And this lady looked at me. She said, because I love people and I want to help people. I said, well, it shows. One day they were helping Jeannie in the rehab. And, uh, of course, we're on television and all over the place. Of course, live stream now, our network has carried live stream all over the world globally. VTNTV.com. You can watch it anywhere, any place. But they were taking care of her. And, and she, her program came on the television in the room. So they looked at her and this lady, she looked at her and then she looked up there and then she looked at her. She said, that's you. She said, yes, ma'am. And Jeannie was singing. So we gave them all a copy of her CDs before we left. And this little nurse followed her out to the car. And she said, can I hug you? She said, well, sure. She's talking full, walking, everything's fine. She said, sure you can. She hugged her and she says, You've been so precious. She said, we're so sad to see you go. She said, we don't see many people leave here. That was a testimony to the anointing and the power of God. Now, here's, here's how I want to minister to you this morning. Since the, the song, and you, you might want to sing along with her. I did this last week in uh, Colorado Springs at Karis Bible College, and the student auditorium is about this size. And I didn't realize the time had passed, the bell rang, but nobody heard it and nobody left. They replayed the song three times. And people were just lifting their hands, worshiping God and singing along with her. Everybody has experienced some kind of hurt, some kind of challenge in their lifetime. And I want to pray for you this morning if you've had difficulty speaking or walking. It could be a speech thing, could be a brain thing, could be an accident, could be an illness, a sickness or whatever. If you've had difficulty walking, Again, it could be an accident. It could be some kind of challenge in your physical body. But I want to pray for you. And I'm going to ask my wife if she'll come and sing. If you have a microphone for it, yeah. If she'll come and... And, and I'm going to ask them to... Uh, put the track on And she's going to sing along with herself, but she may pray with me. I don't know. Just whatever she feels led. But I want to lay hands and pray for you. Now, I depend so much on the anointing. The anointing is, is, is the presence of God. It's the person in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I remember we've had the privilege of praying with a lot of people over the years. One time, R.W. Schembach asked me if I would pray with him under the tent. And I prayed with him under the tent twice, two occasions. I've never seen anybody pray like he prays. And I've never seen the manifestation of the anointing like I did under that tent. How many of you know who I'm talking about? R.W. Schembach. Brother Schembach was trained under A.A. A. Allen back in the 40s and 50s healing revival. And Brother Schembach, when he would stand, when he would move in front of someone, I watched the people just change. I mean, their, their countenance changed because he loves people. And you could tell it. And the people knew it. <laughs> if you had back problems, he'd tell you to bend over you bend over and he'd hit you. Whop! And he's a big man, he had a big hand. And they'd fall out. And I told him, I said, Brother Schumbach, I'd fall out too if you hit me like that. 
he laughed. He said, I don't know what I'd do if God didn't heal those people. (laughs) But he said, that's the way I was taught to pray by A.A. Allen. He said, and that's where my faith is. And I have seen this same anointing manifest. And I told Jeannie, I said, it's your song, it's your singing, it's your music, it's your anointing. But I get the pleasure of seeing the people healed and delivered and set free. And last week in Colorado Springs, that there were just people everywhere. And the students were just worshiping God. So if you need healing, if you want hands laid upon you, where speaking is concerned, where walking is concerned, and I'm not going to limit it to that, but if you feel like you want to come up and let the anointing minister to you. And as Jeannie sings, you'll understand what the anointing is about. So if you want to just get up and come up here now, y'all can move this over to the side. Yeah. And you can go ahead and start the uh, track for her to start singing. Turn it up a little more. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to Jeannie's recovery, a powerful testimony to God's faithfulness. I want you to know that God wants the same thing for you too. If you'd like to order the CD that has the song Jeannie just sang, The Anointing, then here's the information on how to order. And when we come back, I'm going to pray over someone who was facing much the same type situation we were. So don't go away. Stir up your spirit and refresh your soul with Jeannie Caldwell's album, Colors, with songs like Didn't Think It Could Be. I didn't think it could be till it happened to me. And My Father. I want to be more like him, more like my father, more like him in every way. You're sure to be refreshed every time you listen. Order Colors by calling 1-800-264-2525. Colors is just $14 plus shipping and handling. Call and ask for product number 15009. I can't encourage you enough to order Jeannie's CD and get that song, The Anointing. Now I want to pray for someone who has a similar situation. This gentleman called in for prayer His wife has had cancer three times. The first two times, she was healed. Now it has attacked her throat. The doctors are telling her 
but her voice box needs to come out. And they only have two to three weeks to make a decision. They are tired and frustrated, questioning what to do. They need direction. They need wisdom, peace, strength. I know exactly how you feel. Don't make any decision without praying first. If you pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit. If not, pray in English and ask God for wisdom. Ask Him to show you in His Word what you're to do. Now I want us to all join together in prayer. Father, first of all, I come in the name of Jesus and I rebuke the spirit of cancer that's trying to destroy this woman's life. I bind that spirit of cancer and command it to come out of her body, loose her throat, and loose her body. Outlaw cells die and come out of her body. Now, Father, I pray that you would give them a rhema, a scripture, a word for them to stand on. The voice restored, vocal cords restored. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're here to stand and pray in agreement with you. If you have a prayer request or praise report, let us know. Email us, prayer at vtntv.com. You can call us 1-800-264-2525. VTN's on Facebook. You can find us at VTN, your Arkansas Christian Connection. You can also follow me on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. And be sure to join Jeannie and me next week, same time. And remember, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If this program has ministered to you, please consider making VTN part of your regular giving. To make a donation or to contact this ministry, write to VTN, P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. You may also call 501-223-2525. Today's program is available to watch online. To watch this video on demand, Log on to vtntv.com and click watch. You may also order a copy of today's show on DVD by calling 1-800-264-2525. Ask for the offer number on the screen.